hello everybody um, just doing another quick video based on some questions we get asked um, in relation to uh, fuel wiring etc so I'm going to try and explain to you as best I can um, there's basically two three types of way that Toyota and Lexus controlled their fuel pumps electronically um, so I'm just talking about the electronic side I'm not talking about how the fuel is read whether it had a regulator in the tank or on the engine or so on I'm just talking about the electrics now all right so one of the first things I want to say to you is there's a lot of confusion and I've seen a lot of forums and uh, Facebook pages and, and posts and so on and so forth is people say I'm looking for the fuel pump relay I can't find it uh, normally on the IS200 pages and that's because Toyota have a weird way of naming their relays um, the actual fuel pump relay is actually called the circuit opening relay well, I don't know if you can see it on there so circuit opening relay so again not the fuel pump relay but just to make matters even more confusing they do create another relay called the fuel pump relay which actually is not the generic or sort of generally accepted fuel pump relay as, as we know it, i.e. relay that controls the fuel pump so I'm going to go through each one um, so I've got examples from LS400 I've got examples from GS300 which actually had an ECU that controlled the fuel pump and I've got an example from an IS200 which is just a basic way of controlling the fuel pump now there are these obviously apply to various vehicles so ls400 had what i like to refer to as the fuel pump resistor system so they just used a fuel pump resistor to slow the fuel pump down um, when it wasn't required to run at full speed to obviously make it a bit quieter uh, so it tended to be on luxury vehicles etc etc um, then you had what they call the fuel pump ec what i call the fuel pump ecu system so this actually had a separate computer that was in the back of the vehicle by the tank and by the fuel pump and this obviously controlled the fuel pump itself directly from the ECU that was uh, communicated to the engine ECU and told it what to do and uh, then you have on the IS200 um, and this is the only one, I, one I've come across so far but this is just a very basic system where it's just a relay powering a fuel pump no no fancy stuff there at all all right uh, right so I'm going to try and do this as best I can but basically what you've got through here is you've got your EFI relay, which comes at the top here, all right, supplied by 20 amp fuse, if that's of any interest. Anyway, this relay comes down and this then supplies your circuit opening relay, which is this one over here. Now this relay comes down along here and then it feeds the 12 volt ignition side of the fuel pump relay, which again is not actually a fuel pump relay, it's a relay that they use to bypass the current through a resistor to slow the flow down. So you'll see it comes through here. It supplies the triggering side of the fuel pump relay. It also supplies the what we call pin 30 side of the relay itself. And obviously it runs down here, goes along here through the fuel pump resistor, up through there, and then it goes down to here and there's your fuel pump, which is just grounded over there. All right. So when the circuit is open, the current can only flow through the fuel pump resistor to the fuel pump. So that's why the fuel pump runs slow when this relay is open. Now, the second that this relay gets closed, now this relay is controlled by the ECU via a pin called FPR. If you've ever seen a pin out, you'll recognize FPR and FC. So FC, which is this green and black one over here, which goes to your ECU, that's what controls the circuit opening relay. So that's the master control. That's what turns on the fuel pump. And obviously from there, it then decides via the fuel pump relay, which you could call fuel pump resistor relay if you wanted to, whether or not the electricity is going to flow through the resistor to the fuel pump or whether it's just going to flow directly. So you can imagine if this is closed, so in other words, if the ECU grounds out this relay, this will then close, the electricity will just flow straight through there, straight to the fuel pump because it takes the path of least resistance. Put a big resistor in, and is going to go, no, I'm going to go straight down there and I'm going to power the fuel pump because that's the easiest route to go down. So that's how LS400, um, uh, you know, uh, non-VVTI worked, but only for 89 to 91 and 95 to 97. 92 to 94 on the LS400 used a fuel pump ECU, the same as a GS300, the same as a GS430, the same as a Sora uh, or SC400 of the United States. Um, so I'm going to basically go on to that one now 
And so essentially that is very, very simple. Um, you've got your EFI relay. Now in this case, obviously we no longer have a circuit opening relay because we don't have a traditional sort of fuel pump with a resistor and so on. So all we've got is the EFI relay, which is controlled by the ECU. That then supplies power to your fuel pump ECU, which is over here, so your plus B coming in. So that circuit is the same that supplies sensors, etc. all comes from the EFI relay. And from here, you'll see there's your fuel pump. So you've got fuel pump positive and you've got fuel pump negative. There's your E for your fuel pump ECU. Now, these are the pins that are what the ECU controls it. So you have FPC, what I call fuel pump control, and you have DI or diagnostics. Now, as you can imagine, it's black with a red. So basically what it does is it gives a 12 volts to the ECU to tell the ECU that the actual fuel pump ECU is on. Move this out the circuit, DI won't get a signal to the ECU and the ECU will throw a code saying you've got a problem with your fuel pump ECU. So that's where you'll get that code from. So this controls the fuel pump and actually sort of speeds it up or slows it down and it gets a PWM signal from the ECU to tell it exactly, you know, how fast to run. Uh, you've probably heard of uh, in the sort of Supra and Sora world, obviously the 12 mod bypass. Essentially what they're doing is they're taking fuel pump plus from there and they're just joining it to there and they're taking the earth from there and they're just doing it to the negative side of the fuel pump. And then you bypass the whole ECU and you're just running it at 12 volts all the time. All right, and I literally mean all the time. It's not controlled in any shape or form, so sitting with ignition on the fuel pump will run. Um, okay, so that's how the fuel pump ECU works. And then moving on to the IS200, super, super simple. Circuit opening relay, which gets its feed from the EFI relay, same as the other one. And this one just simply goes straight down to a fuel pump and earth on the other side. So obviously IS200 was the lowest model, so they didn't get anything fancy. They didn't get a fuel pump resistor to slow it down. Uh, the IS300 did get a fuel pump resistor, and you can see that if you look at where the igniter is, you'll actually see the fuel pump resistor bolted to the same place, all right? So moving on, if you're not sure what you got or how your fuel pump is controlled or how your ECU controlled your fuel pump, uh, the easy way to tell is to look at the pinout. Um, if you had a system that had just a circuit opening relay, and a fuel pump resistor, uh, fuel pump resistor relay, fuel pump relay, all right? You're gonna have FC and FPR, all right? FC for fuel control, which triggers circuit opening relay, FPR for fuel pump relay, which controls whether the current runs through the resistor or whether it just runs straight to the pump. If you're doing a swap, effectively, to get rid of your code 78, which is what you'll get if you have a, um, if you've done a swap and obviously you haven't wired in physically two relays and kept the resistor and so on. Effectively, as long as the ECU sees a 12 volts via FPR, now all you've got to do is apply a resistor there that would imitate a relay coil. So in the case of our micro relays, I think it's about 90 ohms or 100 ohms. So you can take an ignition 12 volt source, um, well, preferably something that's controlled by your EFI relay. 12 volt source and just take it to FPR via a 100 ohm relay as resistor and that'll obviously then imitate this relay which will then get rid of your code 78 without having to go the whole route of obviously physically fitting an actual relay to do that for you. Um, if you've got a fuel pump ECU you're going to see on the pinouts you're going to see FPC and DI so that means fuel pump control and diagnostics all right so easy FC, FPR is a relay with another relay, all right? FPC and DI means fuel pump ECU. Now, as you can imagine, FPC and DI are not going to control a relay. So if you have a system like this and maybe you've got an old, maybe you're doing a GS300 or maybe you're doing that, you, you have a couple of options, obviously. Um, if you're doing a swap where you have to actually build your own fuse box, you can do a system whereby you use oil pressure or alternator light or something like that to control the relay, which would then control the fuel pump. Uh, or you could do what my good friend Kelvin does is obviously use a tachymetric relay, which is a relay that'll activate when it receives an RPM signal. So this will then control the fuel pump to run only when the engine's actually running, which is effectively how to to control it. Um, so yeah, so that's what you'll basically have to do short of actually getting the fuel pump ECU and using exactly like you see here. That's gonna be your only real option there is to try and have another system, either a switch 
or use a relay with the oil pressure or the alternator light or something like that just to control it so it doesn't stay on you know with ignition on uh, for safety reasons all right um, and ah, the other thing I wanted to say about the fuel systems is they do not prime these systems do not prime so when you turn on your key they are not going to prime for two three seconds or whatever and so on so don't be alarmed if you don't hear the fuel pump running that's not how they work um, they work on two situations number one when you receive an STA signal so there is actually a 12 volt that goes to the ECU when you're cranking the vehicle and that's called your STA pin um, that does actually two things it'll lock the timing I think at 10 degrees and it'll also activate the fuel pump then the fuel pump will continue to run as long as it gets an RPM signal aka a signal from your crank sensor so that's when the pump will carry on running so um, hopefully this helps you guys out a little bit um, especially some of the guys are getting confused you know maybe with the IS200 or IS300 or whatever and so on and so forth and going oh I, I can't find my fuel pump read I don't know where it is called your circuit opening relay um, if you're doing swaps and you're getting uh, code 78 and you just want to get rid of it um, uh, again you can use your resistor and go from there uh, to FPR and then FC is a nice one because you can use FC from the ECU to control a normal relay so you don't have to worry about doing something weird like using oil pressure and so on and so forth. You can straightforward just use FC to control a bogger standard normal relay and that will then control your fuel pump. So that's obviously nice to go through there. Now, I don't have an extensive list of all the vehicles um, that run the different systems. These are just some examples um, that I can give you. But like I said, the, the important thing is find out what ECU you have. So at the end of the day, get your ECU, get the part number, go on to your DIY. Uh, dot com put the part number in it'll tell you exactly what model you've got once you've got that you can find the diagrams and then you can find out whether you have fc and fpr or fpc and di and then you can know exactly where to go from there how to wipe your fuel system whether you can use the ec or not or whether you have to make an alternative plan or whether you want to actually go ahead and get a fuel pump ecu to control it from there all right hopefully that's helpful um, just sort of trying to get as much information to guys as possible and um, it's obviously easier just to do this on a video and show you guys exactly how it works uh, rather than trying to explain either over text or phone or writing a message so thanks for watching um, and if there's anything else that you guys want to know um, obviously we don't we don't sell instructions uh, to wire these up that is our good friend Calvin he does that we obviously just build uh, new harnesses um, but little sort of tips like this, if you guys want anything, please let me know. Um, every time I get asked a question that I think will be best explained via video, I will just continue to do that. And hopefully that will help you guys out and help me out. I can just send you guys to a video and hopefully explain everything you need to know. But thanks for watching. Cheers.